game was off the hook, off the chart. Love to run. And run to way. Pacers get the first possession. 100 points early in the third quarter. That's insane. Caliber. Oh, he's starting to heat up. How do, How do I explain, explain this? This is crazy. How do you make the video so people know it's crazy? Trey backs up. Three ball. Got it. What is happening with offenses? The left side and Green's. This is nuts. What is happening with offenses? What is happening with offenses? We've just experienced the most efficient opening month of a season we've ever seen. And the Pacers are the highest scoring team in league history right now, averaging 128 points per game. They currently have the most efficient offense of all time, and they play at a breakneck pace, which set up this epic showdown with the Hawks during the NBA Cup. Atlanta scores on a putback here, and Tyrese Halliburton just takes off like he stole something, touches the paint in three seconds, then no looks it out to a shooter, and that is an easy three points. DeJounte Murray throws the ball out of bounds, and before you can say peach basket, Halliburton presses fast forward, gets right into a high-speed pick and roll, and hits another shooter. And those were dead ball situations. So when the Pacers get a stop and can run in transition, it's like a track meet where everyone's goal is to sprint to the line. This isn't complex offense. They just all start sprinting the second they get it. And when the team shoots 39% from downtown, defenses have to pick their poison. Go back to plays. Murray's matched up with Halliburton. By moving toward him in that split second instead of sprinting back, Tyrese can break free, and that forces a second defender to come help. The Hawks need to execute a perfect switch behind the play. They don't, and that turns into target practice for the Pacers shooters. This time, Murray makes a 90s-style jumper on the baseline and then talks to the ref on his way back, and you can't do that against Indiana's pace, so it turns into an easy layup. And that only happened because in one second, they inbounded the ball. This defender thinks he needs to switch over to Halliburton. That might have actually worked out okay, but Aaron Neesmith took off from the corner. Clint Capella was supposed to guard him. So there's one defender back to stop two pacers, meaning this defender actually needs to switch on to Neesmith. Capella flies out of the play, and Trey Young is just way too small. The Hawks are actually right behind Indiana in pace, so they push it down your throat after a make two. And Trey is always testing defenders in early offense, going pick and roll, and this backline defender needs to rotate, but when Trey looks left, he thinks the threat is gone, and boom goes the dynamite. Neither of these teams are great defensively, especially the Pacers, so this matchup was prime for offensive fireworks. I mean, nobody attempts to stop the ball here, but these offenses are extraordinarily difficult to stop anyway. The Pacers switch this pick and roll, so Trey destroys their center with a smitty, and naturally Indy wants to avoid that switch. Only putting two defenders on the ball exposes them elsewhere, and the Hawks have a ton of shooters too. The whole league runs these three-man pick and rolls, where the big sets a ball screen, and then a shooter screens the big man. But this is misdirection for a back screen to spring that big, who then spins it off the glass for an and one with some award-winning English. And this is really filthy because Bruce Brown doesn't want to leave the shooter on this play because that man, Bogdan Bogdanovich, came out in the second quarter flamethrowing, hitting five straight shots, including this no-dip catch-and-shoot three, then following that one up with a little drifting fadeaway three over on the wing, and finishing it with this pure heat check off a handoff, and somehow he was only the third hottest player in this game. Trey Young was on one all night, finishing 13 of 17 from the floor, engaging in some sort of personal quest to see how far out he could splash threes from. And I don't know how defenses are supposed to take away these 30-foot shots, 
the dude isn't even in the picture here and launches it out near half court. That's insane. And then there's Halliburton, who absolutely lost his mind in the third quarter, pouring in 26 points on seven of eight threes in that single period. This is just a simple sideline screen for Tyrese. DeJounte Murray thinks he's going around it, so he goes to switch, realizes he's shooting, and at that point, it's too late. This is where Halliburton's spectacular passing comes into play. When defenses try to stop this sideline screening action, if two defenders commit to Halley's shot, the roll man can run free, and that's usually going to be a layup. So when the Pacers set up this screen, the guard takes away the roll man, the big man switches out to the ball, but Tyrese just shoots it from the logo. My goodness. Finally, Atlanta is able to push him toward the sideline on one, but he just crosses back for daylight and hits another one. And how do you stop this? This is crazy. <laughs> Halliburton is the pace car for Indy's high octane offense, finding shooters in transition, and his processing speed and passes are so fast that nine times out of 10, he's right on the money with his decisions. He does this in the half court too, sprinting into staggered screens here, so a second defender jumps out in case he shoots, but that leaves another shooter open up top. And at full speed, look how hard it is to recover to that shooter, and nope, it's a layup. He pushes it into the front court in two seconds. They go to that sideline screen. He looks to hit the roller, realizes there's a better pass in midair, somehow skips it all the way to the corner, and Murray's late to help again. I'm not sure anyone has a sharper double-edged sword right now than Halliburton's quick-release pull-up three and his deadly ability to gut teams with bullet passes. Look at this 4D chess. He's open, but ball fakes to a teammate instead, acts like he doesn't see the deadly buddy healed, but he's just playing chicken with Joel Embiid, and when Embiid drifts too far to the perimeter, Halliburton sees a layup opportunity instead. Despite leading the league in assists with a whopping 12 per game, Halley has one of the lowest turnover percentages in the league. And he's never shot under 40% from three in a season, even though he takes nearly nine per game. He's also surrounded by a bunch of shooters who are willing to run hard in transition and fire without much daylight. And he's in a system with tons of screening and movement that unlocks that passing. This starts as a basic pick for the ball. The guard then flares out off another screen, that screener acts like he's going to screen for Tyrese, but slips to the rim instead, which collapses the defense, and then he can kick it out for a wide open three. This time, it's one of those nasty three-man screening actions. The guard slips out right in front of the big man, which creates a ton of defensive confusion, and it's another dime for Halliburton. Atlanta actually tried trapping Tyrese in the backcourt to slow him down, but even then he found a weakness and that gashed the Hawks. But they were determined to force someone else to beat them. Murray's glued to him here, so Heald pops and he makes some nonsensical shot, and then a minute later they're still denying Halliburton the ball, so Buddy just turns into Steph Curry with the relocation three. With the score 147-143, Trey says, don't worry about it, and steps back for three more. And when it's the Pacers' turn, the Hawks spring a trap on Halliburton. But Atlanta's also freaked out by healed shooting, and that leaves no one at the rim. With two minutes to play in a 149-146 game, Heald stays with Murray, but he flips it in anyway, and after a rare empty trip for the Pacers, Young goes to the Redux with another step back and the Hawks are in the lead. Of course, Indiana comes right back. They don't trap Halliburton, so he kicks it over to Heald and Sadiq Bey and Trey botch the switch. Young lunges at the shot, only Murray isn't there to contest because he's stuck out on Halley and it's like there's a magnet in the hoop. 
The Hawks go back to the isolation set for DeJounte. He loses it, but it ends up with Bay, who ties the game at 152. And remember when I said a third player caught fire in this one? Well, that was the fourth quarter inferno known as Buddy Healed. That one put Indiana up 155-152, and after a chaotic final possession, the Pacers held on to win the first game in NBA history where both teams posted a 140 offensive rating and shot over 60% from the floor. So even with some of that shaky defense, this would have been a good shooting game in an empty gym. Let's zoom out and put all this madness into perspective. Until 2020, the best offense in NBA history scored about 116 points every 100 possessions. But in recent months, the league average offensive rating has passed 116, and so the best offense five years ago might be less efficient than an average team today. And that's all happened because of the unparalleled shooting skill, improved offensive strategy, and relentless pace that is turning some of these NBA contests into a real-life video game. The Pacers currently have a 129 offensive rating with Tyrese Halliburton on the floor. That is three points ahead of Nikola Jokic's mark of 126 set last year. You can compare Halliburton, the Pacers, and this year's best players to players like Jokic from the past at patreon.com slash thinkingbasketball. It's also the best way to directly support us. And there we have player and team stats that update daily throughout the season that help us research these videos and our podcasts. Hope you enjoyed this one as much as I did. We are very thankful for your continued support. And of course, I do hope you are having a great day.